while describing the Chola lineage in Tiruvalangatuch Sepeds, Adithan reached the sunset due to the desire to see the sky. The world was surrounded by the darkness of Kali. It is said that the Tiruvalangatuch Sepet is inscribed on the untimely death of Aditha Karikalan, the crown prince of the Chola Empire, a heroic Pandian headed hero. The room of the Kadampur Palace where Aditha Karikalan was lying dead was truly dark. The bull-faced man's neck was strangled and he was thrown to the ground, for a while there was also darkness in the heart of the warrior. Little by little, when the light appeared in that soul, when he started to remember, his eyes also woke up. But because of the darkness that surrounded him, nothing caught his eye. Therefore, where he is and what condition he is in is not visible in his soul. The headache was the first thing that happened. Pain also appeared where the neck was stretched. He knew he had to gasp for breath. How did that headache come about? What caused this neck pain? Why is it difficult to breathe? Aha! That bull! Is it true that you saw him? Is it true that he tried to kill himself by strangling himself? Why did he stick his neck out? Is it to stop him from making noise? To prevent himself from moving beyond? Why? Why? Where did she want to go, defying his iron grip? Aha! Uh -huh. Remember! To go to Aditha Kari Kaler. Alas! What happened to him? What happened to Nandini? What did Ravi Dasan do? What would Kalamukhan have done after trying to stop him and pushed him to the ground? Where is it now? In the dungeon? On the subway? Vandaya the van looked around with white eyes. I don't know anything. Oh God, is there such a darkness? He remembered that the place where he had fallen was in Nandini's room, near the shrine. Is he lying there? Or have they taken it somewhere else and left it? How to know this? He stretched out both hands and groped. An object was tapped. What is that? Doesn't it look like a knife? Yes. It's a knife. The knife in the screw. More powerful than ordinary blades. If anyone jumps, he dies. Have we seen such a strange knife anywhere? Where is it whose hand did we see? Everything that happened the night before came to mind one by one. How did this knife get here? Oh. Its flap is wet. How did the moisture come in? No water. Oil? Not even that. Must be blood. Alas! Whose blood? Maybe his own blood? Vandaya the van touched the back of his skull and looked. He touched his neck and looked. It was painful, but there was no bleeding. There was no pain from a stab wound anywhere else in the body. Then, this whose blood does the blade of the twisting knife drink and lie here beside us? He did not hurt anyone because of this. He had never taken it with his hand before. Then who would have used it? Could it be Itump and Kari? Who would he use this on? Perhaps it was Itump and Kari who played the role of the fearsome-looking Kalam again? No. No. It can't be. Itump and Kari is not that tall figure. What is this? Footsteps? Is anyone coming? Can we not speak? Can you give me a voice? Shouldn't those who come come with lamps in their hands? We'll never know where we are, right? Are you going to trample yourself in the dark? Vandiyadeva suddenly got up and sat down with this thought. Who's there, with the small knife ready in hand? He asked. The sound of his voice surprised him beyond measure. He himself could not recognize it. It didn't sound like his voice. Due to the grip of that bull, his throat has suffered this injury. It is difficult to get the sound out. Once again who's there? He tried to shout loudly. There was no sound except for something and a growl. Again the sound of footsteps stopped quickly. It seems that the person who came heard his voice and turned back the way he had come, fearing that it was a demon or a devil. Vandaya the van tried to laugh at this. The voice of laughter also sounded without knowing its meaning. Okay, no more sitting or waiting. We just have to get up and walk around and check where we are. Stood up, 
legs wobbled. However, he managed to walk. No matter how much I stretched out my hands, nothing was knocked. In the distance, something glimmered. Aha! Doesn't it look like a mirror? It shines because a very thin ray of light hits it from somewhere. Vandiyadevan remembered the image of Ravidasan entering with the tiger's body in his hand reflected in the mirror itself. Okay, okay. We are still inside Nandini's room. But why is there so much darkness here? Why is there silence? What happened to all the people who were just ahead in this room? Thinking like this, Vandiyadeva stumbled and walked in the dark. He went on, thinking that perhaps there would be light if he went to the door, or that he might get out and ask someone to find out what had happened. He fell down again as something stopped him on his feet. But this time he fell on something soft and didn't get hit hard. The smooth material turned out to be tiger skin. He must have fallen on the tiger skin that Ravidasan took in his hand and threw. The knife slipped from his hand when he tripped. He reached out and fumbled to find it. Something soft tapped his hand. Vandiyadeva's whole body trembled. The fur stood on end. Panic filled his chest. Could it be so? Thinking that, he rubbed it again. Yes, it's a human body. The man's palm was tapped on his hand. He immediately removed the tiger skin and threw it away. Then he looked, and the faint light that fell on the glass was reflected and revealed a little of the body lying below. Alas! Isn't Prince Aditha Kari Kalar lying? Not him. His lifeless body is lying. Vandiyadeva's chest constricted his throat. Unbeknownst to him in the eyes tears. He touched various parts of Karakalar's body with trembling hands. There is no room for doubt. It's a dead nest. The blood that flowed from the side of the rib of the lifeless body drenched his hands. At that moment he remembered Kundave Prati. Whatever the matter Razi sent him for, he did not succeed in that task, he failed completely. How to wake up in her face? As much effort as he could do, that much was done. But to no avail, destiny prevailed. He took the lifeless body of the prince and placed it on his lap. I don't know what to do above. He has lost the power to think. There was no strength left in the throat to scream. The prince is dead, we have not succeeded in the agreed cause, we can no longer wake in the face of Kundave. These thoughts were repeatedly coming to his mind. He didn't know how long he sat there thinking like this. It was only after he saw some men approaching the room with torchlight that he regained some sense of self. He took Karakalar's body from his lap and stood up. Ten or twelve people came from the front door. Two of them were holding torches. And some came bearing work. In front of them all came Kandhamara and next to him the great Sambuvarayar. The faces of all who came showed fear. They looked like ghosts in the torch light. Anger and rage were bubbling only on Kanamaran's face. He looked at Vandiyadeva and said, Aid Badaka. Murderer. Traitor of friendship. Traitor of the kingdom. Didn't you run away? I thought you were gone. He roared. Then to the great Sambuvarayar he said, Father. Look there, the murderer. Look at the Avenger who masqueraded as a friend. Look at the Sand Alan who has brought an immortal stain on our dynasty. Look at his countenance. Look at the terrible crime he has committed as written on his face. He said. Sambuvarayar approached the body of Aditha Karikalan lying on the ground without saying anything in response. Sitting on its head, he gazed for a while and said, Alas! Fate! Is this time in my house? Shall the blame for killing Vendon fall on my head? Moaning, he hit his head with patter, patter, and lamented. Kanamaran said, Father! Our clan will never be blamed for that. Here we have caught the murderer red-handed. Look at the knife he used to kill the prince. Look at the blood on it. When I came before, he was not there, nor was the knife. He ran away and turned back. Maybe it seems that the prince has come to see if there is life in his body. It is as if he has come to screw his throat because the stabbing is not enough. 
father. To such a great villain, to a conspiratorial traitor, what punishment is to be given? Is it not enough? Kanamaran went on talking. Vandiyathevan was already unable to clear his throat. Gondamara's words left him in awe. Only then did he realize that he was in a position where others could consider him a murderer. Isn't this Gondamaran charging himself with the crime of stabbing the prince to death? He said that I stabbed him in the back earlier. Now he says I killed the prince. Such is our condition. Aha! Uh -huh. That Pavur Mahini, a beautifully shaped venomous snake, seems to have planned for this. This is why she saved herself a few times. This is how she resolved her enmity against Kundave Prati. Aha! Uh -huh. Where is that beautiful female ghost? How did she escape? It seems that when the matter was over, she escaped through the tunnel along with Ravi Dasan and others. Thinking like this, Vandiyathevan's thoughts suddenly turned to another side. It is certain that he did not kill Aditya Kari Kalar. But who else would have killed? Nandi? Or Ravita Sana? Or a bull? Maybe it is just a hour cloud that appears for a moment and disappears at the moment of forgetting? Or could it be a Dumbang Kari who brought this twisting knife? Oracle Kanamaran is the only one who has done this bad thing because of his love for Nandini and is blaming it on us? Or did Aditha Kari Kalar commit suicide after listening to Nandini's amazing secret? Kanamaran, looking at the men standing by his side, said, O oh men of sticks! Why are you standing idle? Seize this murderer! It was then that Vandiyathevan remembered his predicament again. He looked at Gandamara with compassion and sorrow in his eyes. With a great effort he cleared his throat, Kandamara. What is this? Do you believe that I would have done such a cruel deed? Why should I do it? What will I gain from it? Friend! Kandamara said, Sichi. I am not your friend. I want to cut out your tongue for saying that. What is your profit, you ask? Why is there no profit? It's just a desire to get Nandini's eyeballs. Oh! Where is that Pavur Mahini now? He said. Kandamara. I really don't know. I've been lying here unconscious. I only remembered just before you came. I don't know what happened to Nandini. Perhaps she got out through the tunnel. In the hunting hall her men, Vera Pandian's menaces, are waiting for four, with whom Nandini might have gone. Kanamaran said, Oko. She will deceive you too. But don't pretend that you don't know anything. Who will believe that? Didn't I know that you had fallen in love with her and were ready to finish what you started with your head? Aditya Karikala himself had told him. Nandini had also told him the truth about you. She incited, thought to satisfy her, you have committed this murderous misdeed. It is a sin to wake up on your face. He said. Damn it. I swear. I didn't kill the prince. I took the responsibility of saving his life from the old brat. That's how you tricked the prince. Then you tricked him and stabbed him to death. Otherwise, how did you get into this room? Why did you come? Kandamara. I came to protect the prince knowing that he was in danger. I lost in the attempt. But that is not my fault. If you want your sister Manamegali, she is me. Sichi. Don't talk about my sister. Don't say her name. Be careful. You know if she talks again? I'll grab you by the neck and kill you right now. After saying this, Gandamaran rushed on Vandiyadeva and grabbed the ropes that tied his chest and shoulders together and shook him to a pulp. Then, looking at Sambuvarayar, who was sitting near the body of Aditha Karikalan, who was deep in agony, he said, Father! Tell me what is happening to him. Tell me what is happening to this murderer who has brought eternal disgrace to our clan. If you give me permission, I will cut him to pieces right now. Father! Tell me! He shouted. Sambuvarayar, who was sitting like a delirious looking at Karakalan's body, heard Kanamaran's shout and looked up. His vision went beyond Kanamaran. 
he saw the curtain of the bed in the room moved. The next moment he pulled back the curtain and saw a figure emerge. He didn't immediately recognize who was emerging from the curtain because his eyes were watering. When he saw the figure come a little closer, he knew that it was his Salvakumari Manamekali. Astonishment and disgust mixed with pain appeared on his face. Manamekali. How did you get here? The words he heard made Ken Thamaran also look back. Father. I was right here. Tell my brother not to do anything to him. There is nothing wrong with him. She said. Kanamaran said, Father. Have you seen? How this bad guy has spoiled my sister's heart. Have you seen? There is nothing wrong with him. He snorted and laughed. Yes, brother. Surely there is nothing wrong with him. Monimegali said firmly. Kanthamaran was gripped by anger on one side and shame on the other. Sister. Shut up. Who invited you here? You shouldn't have come here. Your wits are not in Suwe Dien. Go to the front door immediately. Go to where the other girls are. Kanthamaran shouted. No, brother. My wits are in Suwe Dien. It is your wits that have been disturbed. Otherwise you would not have accused him of killing the prince. Said Manamekali. Kanamaran said, you ignorant one. Why do you intercede for this murderous evildoer? He said. He's not a murderer, that's why. Said Manamekali. Gandamaran laughed furiously and said, if he is not the murderer, then who is? Who killed the prince? Did you kill him? He said. Yes. I killed it. I killed it with this sword. Said Manamekali. Hearing these words, those who were there were stunned. They looked at each other in amazement. After a moment of bewilderment, Kanamaran left Van Diathavan and ran towards Manamegali. He stared at its tip. Father! Listen to this! She could not lift this sword. She says she killed the prince with it. If it had flowed into the prince's body, could she have taken it back? Look at the tip of it. It seems to have been wiped clean. She says this to save the mighty. Why does she care so much about him? So far. This villain has corrupted her mind. He has bewitched her with magic. Look at his face. Look at the crime he has committed written on his face. He said. Indeed, Vandiyadeva's face was filled with amazement, bewilderment and pain. The one who had been silent all this time now opened his mouth and said, Kandamara. You are telling the truth. I am the guilty one. Your sister is imagining things like this to save me. Princess. Thank you. I will not forget the brotherly affection you have shown me even after life has departed from my body. But now what their Damayan says. Listen. Go to that place. He said. Hearing this, Kanamaran's enmity reached its peak. His eyes, which had been red before, were now burning. I. Have you come to the point of recommending me? Will you listen to her whom I did not ask? Does she have such a brotherly desire for you? Was she born with me? Was she born with you? Does she have more respect for you than me? Why is that? What magic has you done to corrupt her mind like that? This is enough for me to kill you. I will send you to hell and see you again. I will kill you with the sword that your lovely sister held in her hand. Wouldn't that make you happy? Yelling like this, Kanthamaran swung his sword and rushed at Vandiyadeva.